Elon Levy has been a key cog in Israel's propaganda machine. Since the 7th of October, the Oxford and Cambridge-educated Londoner has frequently appeared on our screens defending Israel's assault on Gaza and calling pro-Palestinian protesters, quote, rape apologists. But it's now been reported that his time as an official Israeli government spokesperson may be coming to an end. Levy has been suspended from duties after angering the UK government. That's reported by the Times of Israel. So what did Levy do to put himself on the wrong side of the UK government? Well, on the 6th of March, Foreign Secretary David Cameron said this. Meeting with Benny Gantz today, I made clear the steps Israel must take to increase aid into Gaza and the UK's deep concern about the prospect of a military offensive in Rafa. These are tough but necessary conversations. Levy took offence at that tweet and posted a long reply, um, which included this statement. It is factually incorrect that the flow of aid has not increased. Last week, we had a record 277 trucks. Over the past two weeks, there have been nearly 50% more food trucks entering compared with before the war. Israel's crossings have excess capacity, and if the UK wants more aid to enter Gaza, it should send it, and we'll make sure it gets in. And in a tweet that has now been deleted, Levy also said, this. I hope you are also aware there are no limits on the entry of food, water, medicine, or shelter equipment into Gaza. And in fact, the crossings have excess capacity. Test us. Send another 100 trucks a day to Karem Shalom and we'll get them in. Now, those tweets triggered a complaint by officials in the Foreign Office who wrote to Israel's Foreign Ministry to express their, quote, surprise at Levy's posts and asking whether the remarks reflect the Israeli government's official position. In other words, was the Israeli government really trying to tell us they'd let in a hundred trucks a day when there were thousands already queuing outside? Now, the answer was obviously no. But Levy's reply to Cameron isn't the only time he got himself in trouble over telling half-truths to Tory MPs. Responding to a tweet about delays to aid getting into Gaza by chair of the Foreign Affairs Committee, Alicia Kearns, Levy said this, Hello, Alicia. Israeli government spokesperson here. Are you aware the Karem Shalom crossing is currently closed on Saturdays at the request of the UN because there is so much undistributed aid piling up on the other side? The problem isn't aid getting in, it's getting it around. But what Levy didn't seem to know is that Kearns had recently visited um, the border with Egypt. Now, she replied with this, Thanks for your comments. Please provide evidence of the request by the UN to close on Saturdays. This is not what the UN told us yesterday, nor is it recognised by aid agencies and governments I've spoken to. Now, in response, Levy posted this. Thank you for engaging. This is the Israeli unit responsible for facilitating the transfer of humanitarian aid into Gaza. They will be happy to help you with any questions you have. This is the Israeli unit. He was saying the UN. Kearns wasn't having it. Very happy for Kogat, so that's the Israeli unit, to answer as well. But you made this statement, UN request for no deliveries on Saturday. So I'd be grateful if you can evidence your claims. And then she said, provide the evidence behind your statement or retract and correct it. So she's not accepting this statement from the Israelis. She wanted Levy to justify it with evidence, not just sort of passing on that request. It isn't the only British politician as well that Levy has irritated. So Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu appears to be turning on his mouthpiece um, too. So not just British politicians, also Israeli politicians who are getting annoyed of him. Now, a source in Netanyahu's office told Israeli newspaper Ynet that Levy was, quote, busy from morning to night promoting himself and running an independent agenda before the suspension Levy's media appearances had also been reduced reportedly at the insistence of Netanyahu's wife, Sarah. That was after she learned um, that Levy had taken part in anti-government protests over planned judicial reforms. So that's telling there. So on the judicial reform side, he is more liberal um, than Netanyahu. But when it comes to the ethnic cleansing of, of Palestinians, very much on board with the Likud agenda. Of course, I don't imagine you to be feeling too sorry for Levy. Um, But he, you know, He has come up with an alternative plan. While he might no longer be spinning for a genocidal government, he may be about to take up an altogether different kind of spin. According to Ynet, Levy auditioned for Israel's Dancing with the Stars just last month. Wow. 
Dahlia, if this guy has lost his job as an official spokesperson, we aren't going to sort of miss him on our screens. It seems like sort of hubris. He got carried away with that. He thought he could sort of play British politicians publicly in the same way that he tries to do that with with um, hosts on television. Obviously, you know, politicians don't like to be lied to on Twitter, right? Somewhat unseemly. But the idea that we're sort of we're seeing this guy constantly on our TV smugly justifying a genocidal war. And now he's auditioning for Dancing with the Stars. I mean, it's incredibly macabre. I wouldn't be too quick to kind of claim the death of his political career. I think this is a deeply ambitious man who's got all of the markings of someone who is aiming to get to the top of the political hierarchy. You know, this is a very, he's, you know, very elite private education, going through Oxford and Cambridge, he had actually, interestingly, he had a brief detour into musical writing. He has he did a he wrote a musical that about based on John Rawls's theory of justice, which is like this very sort of dry but quite important political philosophy book for you know. And he it was played at the end of a fringe or whatever. So aside from that detour, his career has very much looked you know. Then obviously becoming an Israeli spokesperson for the government. You know, this is someone who. Uh, is certainly looking to have a very like ambitious political career. And I'm sure he just sees this as a kind of a blip in which sort of internal political, because realistically, I don't think that he would have had this blowback as much from British politicians had Netanyahu not been very willing to let him go because within is within domestic Israeli, I mean, everyone in the kind of most in the Israeli state are kind of united in the pro- in terms of the project of ethnic cleansing in Gaza. But when it comes to kind of the domestic particularities of Israeli, go- you know, there's factions and there's political struggle and Levy in this moment fell on the wrong side of it. Time will pass and I'm sure he will reemerge. You know, this when you have that much, when you've been training that much to be a politician, you don't let go as easily and you realize that time pass- time moves quite quickly in the political world. Um, but in terms of this kind of whole um, fracas, it's it beyond Levy himself, even though I don't think he's going anywhere and I think he's going to be, we're going to see much more of him um, in the future. It is very exhausting to, in the midst of a campaign that is, as the ICJ has acknowledged, plausibly genocidal in the Gaza Strip, as we are seeing people like Jared Kushner from the cozy uh, ivory towers in the US, talking very flippantly about the idea of displacing millions of people from their homes um, and replacing them with high value real estate, that we are nitpicking about trucks of humanitarian aid and the way that the weaponization of humanitarian aid and the aim to to make this into a a logistics conversation about whether or not humanitarian aid is trucks of humanitarian aid are getting in and can be distributed when the actual thing that is taking place here is the attempted elimination of Gaza as a Palestinian place inhabited by Palestinian people. It's like the fact that we're the, 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 the conversation is getting deflected into these conversations as if humanitarian, as if, first of all, a state that is trying to displace and rid this the strip of its inhabitants has any interest in keeping them alive or keeping them healthy. Firstly, that's absurd. And secondly, the idea that if you are being at the receiving end of a genocidal campaign, that having a couple of humanitarian aid trucks coming in is somehow a kind of balance um, a balancing act, which we are seeing, you know, Western states that are trying to to obfuscate the fact that they are providing political, militaristic and financial cover for a genocidal campaign in the Gaza Strip, are trying to sort of say that we're balancing the scales by trying to get humanitarian aid in. I mean, it's manipulative, it's, it's obfuscating, and it is frankly beside the point. You cannot give bombs with one hand and humanitarian aid with the other. And another reason that it's not only distracting from the magnitude of of what the the ambition um, in the Gaza Strip is, um, but it's also an attempt to portray this as some kind of normal war. 
Um, and, you know, normal war, I'm not saying that normal war is not brutal, um, but it's trying to portray this as some kind of conflict that is happening at a meta level that people are just getting caught up in. No, the war is on the people. It's not that people are getting caught in the crossfire. The war is on the people. And the aim is to either by pushing people out because you've made it so in, in, inhabitable or by literally indiscriminate killing, you are trying to eliminate a people. And the fact, and, and it is a com strategy to get us into the weeds of this humanitarian truck has managed to get in or this one hasn't or the supplies are being stolen by Hamas or we're, we're um, uploading videos of us, you know, of, of Israeli troops flinging boxes into Gaza that just have in Comic Sans written on them medical supplies and like humanitarian aid. It is all an attempt to obfuscate the much more serious um, program of elimination um, that is taking place in the Gaza Strip right now. And frankly, Levy m- trying to make that the conversation is him doing the job um, that that you know the the Israeli state wants him to do. Obviously, he's the spokesperson for it, but it is that is the the ambition that is trying to fulfill. The problem for him is that he just fell slightly on the wrong side of a domestic dispute. But when it comes to the overall um, project, um, I think he is very much has been quite an effective spokesperson um, for Israel. And I'm sure that his political career and ambitions will resume after this short hiatus. But maybe for now, he can go back to putting on substandard plays about, you know, 19th and 18th and 19th century political philosophy.